Welcome to the Business of Beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. Our guest today combined the master aesthetics and law enforcement to help estheticians make money and keep their clients by transforming businesses, business practices. He's a police officer, the inspiration and the personality, while she is a licensed master esthetician, licensed aesthetics instructor, who has been in the trenches of being a solo Etsy and loves to connect and educate. They are proud that they've worked with hundreds of beauty professionals to not only improve their business and profits, but also to increase their self-worth, empowerment, and confidence. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Melissa and Royal at Spa Strong. Yo, Hi. hey. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, so. Sounds so good. I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's like, I, I try. I I uh, so I'm really excited to have you guys on the show. Um, you know, not only do you have a lot of, you know, background in this but you're from my saying you also have a program to help other estheticians and on top of that you're 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 a duo you know normally i have like a solo entrepreneur but here we have a duo so it, it's nice to hear the uh, perspective so i guess to get started first of all can you tell us a little bit about your business yeah. Go ahead. So, um, so like you were saying in the intro, um, I'm I'm a licensed master esthetician. I've actually been in the beauty industry since 2008, and um, I have worked as a solo esthetician. I taught aesthetics. I worked at a medical spa. Had a lot of great experience, um, and I love teaching and coaching. And I was in a car accident back in 2017 that caused me to have to close the doors on my studio. And so I had to shut that down and um, go in a completely different direction, which led me to focusing more on coaching and empowerment. But you go. Yeah, you so I'm a police officer and I've been for five years now. I actually, I've been off work for a year and a half due to injury. I got into a use of force with a suspect and messed up my back. And so I've been off. And so while I was off, we looked at each other and we were like, you know what? our backgrounds could because what she didn't tell you she's badass too I don't, can i cuss on here yeah yeah, yeah okay. she's badass too so <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute but this may be longer than 30 minutes until we are right now it's all good, it's all good. Uh, okay um so we looked at each other and we were like you know what my knowledge as a police officer could really help a lot of these timid estheticians because i'm an expert at showing up as the authority at showing up as the expert and yeah. setting boundaries and policies and yeah. writing reports and, and, yeah. and documenting things. Yeah, like protocols. And, and everything. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we really just combined it that force and we've helped so we've blown so many estheticians minds. Yeah. Like this is, I may be at, I, it may be odd hearing me in this industry, but I really help. Like yeah. it's, it's so crazy. But what she didn't tell you was right after she got into the car accident, a few months yeah. later, she got hired by the Los Angeles police department in the, really? and she, and she went to the police academy uh -huh. and right before graduation, before she had to hit the field, she broke her foot. Oh. And so. Uh, so I had to resign. So we were both at home looking at each other, yeah. injured. Like, like, what the heck? <laughs> but, but the thing was that while I was in the academy, I mean, I had yeah. put aesthetics out of my mind. I was like, okay, that door closed. Yeah. I'm moving on with my life. But I'd sit in class, you know, and we'd be talking about dealing with negotiators or, yeah. um, you know, positioning yourself as the authority or yeah. dealing with the public and all this stuff. And I would think, oh my gosh, I wish I had known that. I wish I'd known yeah. that when I was working as an esthetician that would have helped me so much in this situation. Or, yeah. oh, that, that student that I worked with, because I did coaching and teaching you know, before now. I'm like, yeah. oh, that person that I worked with, I wish that I had been able to tell her this. So yeah. um, I wrote this book <laughs> called oh, Bound Boundaries and Aesthetics that's all about five ways to maintain appropriate boundaries as a spa professional is basically based off of what I learned in the police academy yeah. and how it applies to aesthetics. And so we were like, you know what? Law enforcement, aesthetics, they need each other. Let's <laughs> yeah. bring it together. And yeah. we made spa strong. <laughs> Very cool. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about like that, that, that first step. So that first step right there, like figuring out, okay, we, we want to, I want to go back into aesthetics, but in a different angle, different way, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of, of serving the end client that needs help with their skin, but helping other estheticians that do that, right? Mm -hmm. So now at that point, 
like did you did you ask like 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 did you ask royal hey Royal, i have this business idea like what how did that pan out um you know what honestly the first idea for spa strong actually came to me before i even got hired um i it was when i was in the hiring process for lapd and mm. it was the morning i was getting ready for my polygraph and uh, <laughs> i turned to royal and i said you know what would be kind of cool yeah. if after I get hired and you know we're both police officers and everything, if we started going to like aesthetic schools and talking to estheticians about standing up for themselves, because mm -hmm. you know um, self defense is something that estheticians need to at least have an understanding of. You know we're alone in a very vulnerable situation with usually a stranger. Um, they have to take their clothes off. You know, there's nobody else there. We close the doors. And I personally have had negative situations happen with a client. And I know a lot of other estheticians who have as well. And so at first the idea was very like self-defense based. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, it was kind of like, oh, that's a cool idea. And then we put it away because we were going to go be cops and, or I was going to go be a cop. He already was. <laughs> and then, um, when when he was injured and we were both home you know it just evolved it evolved into yes there is definitely the need for safety within our industry like physical safety but there's also emotional safety mental safety it's you know being able to grow your business in a way that is fulfilling and satisfying where you're not building up resentment you're not turning into a doormat for your clients and working 60 mm -hmm. hours a week but not yeah. having any income to show for it so it all just evolved into you know what we coach our clients on now and everything like that okay yeah now how did you find your first client like what was that like um so that that was interesting i mean we you know we <laughs> we started primarily on instagram okay and at first you know and i kind of had this idea that you know, I had been teaching in the industry for a long time, like teaching aesthetics. And I had mm. a lot of students that I'd worked with and stuff. And I um, was known as an esthetician. I was known as a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought like, if I just start presenting this new thing, that people are going to love it because they already know me and love me. But yeah. they didn't, they didn't know me as like LAPD esthetician, Melissa. Oh. <laughs> and so, so, so yeah. it was kind of like, that's weird. What are you doing now? Yeah, and they so you have to rebrand yourself. Like, Exactly. Yeah. And so it, it started out much slower than we thought mm. that, you know, we thought it was going to. And so it was a lot of, it was a lot of effort. And actually we were talking about this the other day when we first came out with this book, we set it up as a, um, free, just pay shipping. Okay. And we, honest, we couldn't pay people to buy it. <laughs> so bad. No, thank so you for your transparency. Bad. That's a reality <laughs> folks. All right. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. The first, the first webinar we did, we had 14 people show up, seven of whom were my family members. And, <laughs> hey, um, that's impressive. <laughs> that's still know, impressive. No, that, no, that's not the cold part. 400 people signed up for it, but only oh. seven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, and, and honestly, that's the reality of the situation. Like, yeah. our, our business is going well now. You know, our book is like, sells like hotcakes now. I mean, everything is nice. great. Our coaching program is wonderful, but yeah. it, it took a lot of effort. And so, yeah. you know, when people are starting in the business, I mean, the beauty industry, whether you're wanting to actually service clients or teach or whatever, yeah. you've got to understand that it takes time because people, mm -hmm. You can't just show up on the scene and be like, I'm awesome. Come learn from me. Yeah, you have to prove would, yourself. If that was the case, everyone would be starting the, a business, right? There's a long, long-term investment. And there's not even like a, a easy path to follow. Like every, every, every person's path is a little different. Sure. There's like frameworks you can follow. Like I'm sure your program will offer that, but still yeah. everyone's journey is still slightly different. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so like so you started the business in 2017 right um no we started it in the end of tw well kind of oh. started at the end of 2018 officially the beginning of 2019 so it's been oh, okay a year and a half officially, a half. Oh, officially. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so so year and a half at what point did 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 you you know you two talk about like you know what we finally did it we're we're we're, we're getting traction in the business Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> I don't think, I think Roland disagrees with you. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> what are you talking about yesterday? <laughs> because we have 
Well, well, okay. The first started getting traction. Maybe about a year ago. Yeah, about a year. Like six months a in. Year. Oh, six but months I, in. Okay. Yeah. About six and months what did in. that look like? Our first client. First client. Nice. Yeah, yeah. first client. Yeah. Did you yes. did you frame or take a picture of your first payment or first uh, <laughs> any, any of that? No, because it didn't matter because it went right back into the business. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we didn't even get it, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, because because she had coached hundreds before we teamed up together. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, like rebranding, reframing everything. So about six months in, it started getting traction. And to be honest, as great as we're doing now, and like mm -hmm. we have, we just have clients galore, everything's selling, everything's great. I'm still yeah. not satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think there's, <laughs> there has to be that little bit of hunger, right? <laughs> That's like, mm -hmm. like you can't, because like at the point, you know, in my personal opinion, like, Whenever I'm full, like fully full, that means like I'm just content. And I, I worry that a business that's not actively moving forward will shrink, you know? Yep. So it's like, if you're not constantly innovating, you're not constantly investing back in the business. If you just let it stall, it's just like a river that stops flowing, right? The water mm -hmm. will will kind of turn stale, right? Exactly. So, I, want, I, want to, I want to do something, I was thinking about this. I want to do something to submit my legacy. That's oh. what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do something right. to where my great grandkids are still eating off that. Nice. So I, so I want to do something so drastic in this industry and so fucking wild <laughs> that it still feeds them. Yeah. Something crazy. Well, and yeah. and honestly, I feel like this this industry is so wonderful, but there is so much need. There is so much need for direction and for um, strong resources and mm -hmm. um for, for people to also feel heard because there are so many estheticians that, you know, there's a reason why there is extremely high turnover within the spa industry. Like yeah. employee, yeah. Um, you know, spa employees are constantly leaving. The, these estheticians yeah. are not being heard. And so we care about that so much and we care about our clients and these estheticians. And it's like, how, yeah. how lucky are we that we get to stand up for this cause and these people that we, we care for and we believe in so much yeah. while you know eventually being able to feed our grand our great grandchildren you know with like <laughs> the, because our business is growing and and yeah. you have I, I love what you said you have to think that way you can't just say okay my monthly bills are four thousand dollars a month so i have to make four thousand dollars a month because yeah. then you'll only make four thousand dollars a month you're never going to grow beyond that and yeah. so it, it doesn't make you a bad person to be like i want more yeah because, yeah, and yeah and I, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, my, my position in this is like the money, it's more of the ability to, to make a difference. Not so much like, oh, I'm going to buy a Lamborghini or buy a nice fancy, you know, huge mansion or whatnot. Right. After a while, think of all, after, after all the toys that you buy, right. All the fancy houses that you buy, then what? Right. And plus we're going to do when, when you're, you know, you're buried, you know, six feet under, right? It's like, what's all the money going to do for you? Right. But, you know, going back to what Royal is saying, yeah, I, I, you know, leaving that legacy, you know, leaving something for your kids, your, your grandkids, you know, that's, that's amazing. And, mm -hmm. and I agree with you, you know, that's, I, I like that. I like that mindset. Um, but a lot of n people that are thinking about starting a business and I'm curious what you would say to them, like, Hey, I hate my boss. <laughs> that, that, that's one of them, right? Like my boss sucks. Or um, uh, I want to, you know, I, I want to make a ton of money, right? Um, so that's why I'm starting a business, right? What would you say? What would you say? To them? First, <laughs> you, all right. If you want to make a ton of money, I think um, hurry up and wait. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hurry up, hurry up and wait, but don't stop. Mm -hmm. Whatever, and it's. It's come to a point to where like every entrepreneur or successful person says this, no matter if it's Kobe Bryant, basketball, whatever the thing, just don't mm -hmm. stop. Don't give up. It's for yeah. a reason because it works. <laughs> the process works. Just go yeah. and go. You're going to be broke. You're going to be sleepless. And then you hate your boss. You're going to hate you because when you realize you're your boss, bro, you know how hard it is uh, to be your own boss. Mm -hmm. And I like, yeah. I have to turn my mind on to be like, you got to get to work because you, like you shouldn't work for harder for nobody but yourself yeah that's what i think yeah. but now like you gotta eat go go work it's like yeah. oh my god yeah. like it's no sucks. one else telling you what to do 
you know, oh. but also but another perspective, it, all your customers are your new bosses now. So you don't have one boss. You have how many, however many customers you have, that's yep. how many bosses that you have now. Yeah. Right? No, it's so true. It it's so true. And I would say that, um, if you're like, oh my gosh, I hate my boss. I want to start my own business. I would say, how about before you quit, you take a month and learn whatever you can from that boss that you hate so much because mm -hmm. we think, I mean, and I, I was guilty of this. You know, you think that you go and you work at a spa for a little while and then you know exactly how to run one. And so you go and you sign that lease at Sola Salons <laughs> or, you know, wherever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't have any clients and I don't know what to do with the ones yeah. that I have. And yeah. now in, in my case, now I live in my car because I can't afford this business. Right. So, um, I would say before you quit and you have it in your mind, like you're so angry and you're so, um, defiant because you're not being appreciated. I get it. And let's get you out of a toxic situation. Yeah. But while you're there, learn what you can for a minute. Like take off the defensiveness and everything that you're, take off those defensive blinders and look at the systems. Yeah. Look at what's yeah. working because you may learn actually, as much as I dislike this boss, I love the way that they operate in this, in this manner, or I'm not crazy about these policies. So I want to change them in this way because yeah. there is so much that goes into opening your own salon or spa and allowing it to be, um, sustainable. Mm -hmm. and to have a great um, client retention and to be selling those retail products and mm -hmm. um, to position yourself as an expert that yeah. people respect and don't just see you as like, oh, my lash girl, I go to her, she gives great discounts. You know, you don't want to be that girl yeah. or that guy in the industry. And so learn what you can and then, and then we'll help you move forward. It sounded a lot better. Than the I liked what you said too. I think you're smart. <laughs> and and here's, here's something I would add to that. Um, it's the the hate is not strong enough to be able to survive running a business because you might hate your boss today but so you start a business because of that hate you think you can run that business for another five ten years off that hate off that fuel no mm -hmm. i don't think so no right? so it's like so that is not a strong enough driver to actually be able because i'm sure you two have experienced it there are days like for me, like there's, there has been days where I couldn't even get out of bed. Okay. It was so, you know, there's so much stress or so much going on. Right. And it's difficult to, to, to wake up and, and, and face the business and, and, and work with the, the challenges and put out fires. So mm -hmm. you gotta, that has to be the drive to want to grow a successful business has to be strong enough. And, and hate is just not a strong enough emotion. No. So. No, because it's, it's all targeted toward somebody else Yeah, and you can't, I mean, I hate to break it to you. It's just like you said, there are going to be so many hard days, especially in the beginning. There are going to be way more no's than yeses. Yeah. And, um, if you are only operating this business or only starting this business because you're like, I hate my boss, they wouldn't give me a day off. So now I'm going to be an entrepreneur. So I can have a day off any day you want. <laughs> just a proven um, brow, right? <laughs> I know, right? right? Um, I hate to break it to you, but it's going to be a while before you get a day off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It might take it. you six months to get a customer. Just say, right? right? I know, exactly. It might take you six months. Like, and that's right? reality. Like, that is the gospel truth. And yeah. you have to be, you have to understand that and you have to go into it with thick skin. It's not yeah. people snubbing you personally. It's that you haven't given them the reason to come to you yet. Yeah. And people will, just because they see your cute sign outside of your storefront, it doesn't mean they're going to stop and go in. They may need to drive past it 15 times and yeah. look at Google reviews before they make the choice to come in and book with you. Yeah. It's not personal. It's just people aren't in it for you. They're in it for them. Yeah. They're not going to come to you because you look like you could be their next best friend. They're, mm -hmm. they're coming to you because they think you have a problem. They think you have the solution to their problem. That's keeping them up at night. Exactly. So you have to be willing to like prove yourself. And that's mm -hmm. something that, uh, we have estheticians who will come to us and they'll be like, well, my business isn't growing. And we'll, well, just one simple thing, go check their Instagram. We're like, okay, mm. well you posted 15 times, but the last time you posted was three months ago. Yeah. So you're not <laughs> like, like what, you, what, what does you, that yeah. tell your clients? If somebody happens upon your Instagram, they happen to follow that hashtag. They mm -hmm. find your Instagram. They're like, Oh, she's local. Oh, but she hasn't been on here in a while. So she must not be yeah. in business. You know, 
have to yeah. be consistent. You're like, well, nobody was liking my stuff. Okay, in the beginning, nobody's gonna like your stuff. If yeah. you scroll back to the very beginning of our Instagram, we're getting like, you know, 15 likes and we were excited about it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll be honest, like even for this show, when we first started, it was so hard, so hard to find guests because they look bad like, you have no history. You know, who are you, right? What is this about? But at least now we have other guests that have been on the show. You know, we, we, we are much better in our programming and in our kind of like our process on onboarding. So it's mm -hmm. like, it takes time. This is not, not yep. overnight. Um, exactly. Now, going, going back to, so your first, how did you find your first client, by the way? Instagram. Instagram. Okay, Instagram. So what happened after that? Like your second, your third, was it like a big snowball effect or? Yes. Like it, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you, it's in general in life, it's hard to find a job a lot of times. But when you have a job and you want to have like two jobs, it's easier to find the second one. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the way it seems. Like it just mm -hmm. works out. But yeah. after that first one, it just it came. It started growing. It just came. It started yeah. growing. And, and to be honest, we ask our clients to write referrals. We, I mean, I'd like to write testimonials, yeah. you know, and if you know anyone, then that would benefit. Mm -hmm. Like we ask for referrals. We ask for the reviews. You yeah. have to ask for that. People yeah. aren't, you know, every once in a while, somebody will be like, I really enjoyed that experience. I'm going to leave her a five-star review, but consumers are 70% more likely to leave a review if you ask them to. Love it. And yeah. so we ask, and then it just started growing. And, mm -hmm. um, and we have other, you know, we have our one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, um, we have other resources as well. Like we have the book, we have our podcast, um, and that has helped drive people to us also. But yeah. our, our Instagram is kind of where it all started. And then a lot has grown off okay. of that. Now, um, so with your one-on-one -on -one clients and your clients in general, what, what has been the biggest struggle recently for you, for them? I mean, recently, COVID-19. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, the biggest, the biggest issues that people come to us for are um, confidence and authority hmm. within, within their spa, not having the confidence to, you know, enforce policies, not having the confidence to stand up for their prices, not having the confidence to retail or hmm. to So can you run some scenarios? Like, what do you mean, like, not having the confidence? Like, like would, would customers try to haggle them? Like, oh, wow, why is this $50? How about 25? Take it early. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that's it, real. Is that what you're that's saying? Like, that's a real that's thing. That's totally real. And is it a real thing? Or no, like, that's real. It's that's like, real. I have prices right here. This is not a bazaar. This is not like a market here, right? Right. <laughs> right. Um, Name your own know, price. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens the most with solo estheticians. Yep. Ah. Especially ones who are like operating from their house, Mm -hmm. or um, using discounts as um, incentives, incentives oh, to okay. drop people Which in. ultimately devalues their, their, their service, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that happens a lot, but also just this idea of, um, you know, I am like, obvious, it's like our estheticians a lot of times don't understand that um, they have a license in hand. So they are the most qualified when it comes to giving skincare advice between them and their client. Yeah. You know, unless their client is a dermatologist, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they have the knowledge, they have the authority, mm -hmm. but it's like they're scared to tell the clients all the resources and tools they need because they don't want to seem salesy. They don't want to seem pushy. Oh. They opt to, they don't have the confidence to lead, to lead the way yeah. to their optimal skin health. They want to wait for the client to bring it up oh. and you can't do that. Yeah. Like they're yeah. never going to bring it up because they don't know all the things they need. Like, you know, all the things that they need. So it's so, like a mind shift, right? It's like, if you know that you had this magical pill that will save their life, right? Why wouldn't you be screaming up and down and say, take this pill, take this damn pill, yeah. right? Exactly. Or else you're going to die if you don't take the pill, right? Exactly. Because so it's like, if you have the confidence and you know what you're doing, and you know the client needs it, then why aren't you saying something about it? Right? Exactly. This is like a exactly. whole like 180 like mind shift. Like, why why are you even afraid of doing the sale? Right? Why are you afraid mm -hmm. of pushing it? Because your client needs it. You're so you're actually doing a disservice by not saying it. Mm-hmm. It's right? yeah. yeah, and you sold them to get them on your table. 
<laughs> that was a sale. Exactly. Yeah. They, yeah. they already believe that you could be the person with the solution to their problems. Otherwise they wouldn't have ever booked the appointment. Yep. So assume the sale and give them what they need. Mm. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. And then another issue that so many of the estheticians that um, contact us have is client retention. Mm. Okay. And that's something that we actually are coming out with a course um, the end of this month called Keep Your Clients. Mm. And okay. it's all about like, okay, full disclosure. When I first opened my spa, I had no idea what I was doing. My studio spa. No idea what I was doing. I think, I had, I think a lot of people are like that. It's not like, like, oh, I'll start my first business. Uh, like even but you think I though I know like I, you think. I, I, I went to I, business school okay they don't yeah even <laughs> I know seriously I'm like I was in BPA in high school so I know what I'm doing business professionals of America um anyway so so I started my studio and I for like the first three or four months I had almost zero clients like it was very very bad and then after that when I started getting clients I had less than a 15 percent client retention Oof. and I'm not even kidding. It got so bad, David, that I literally had to move into my car. Um, which one five, was, not 50%. 15. No, no, no. One five. And, and yeah. honestly, that's me being generous. Like, it was so bad. Yeah. So if you need a visual. Like, what happened? Did you, like, I, I'm, I, like no offense, were you, like, smelly? And uh, <laughs> like, oh, what is this? I'm not going back. I'm like, well, what, no. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of the issue was um, I... I didn't think that I needed to know anything except how to do amazing services. Uh, I thought that my services were gonna sell themselves. That the yeah. client was gonna come in, love it so much, and just instantly be like, I need this every month for the rest of my life. Okay. You know, and, okay. and that's not how it works. But also I was using um, discounts as an incentive. Mm. And so people were not valuing me. They, mm. it, it wasn't, I wasn't attracting clients who were looking for these services long term. I was attracting clients who were looking for it one time. Like mm, they had an okay. event that they wanted to look really special for. And oh. so they came to me because I had the biggest discount. Oh. But they weren't serious. Yeah, I thought like the Groupon clients. Like, hey, yeah. it's a Groupon sale. Yeah. Oh, look, I'll exactly. go there. And I'll wait exactly. for the next Groupon sale. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. And I just, um, and then I wasn't assuming the sale. I wasn't, um, being confident in my rebookings. I wasn't being confident in my um, product recommendations. I wasn't yeah. doing little things to elevate myself because honestly, there are a lot of other estheticians out there, thousands yeah. of them, mm -hmm. right? Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And so what are you doing to stand out? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to show the client? Like, not only are you going to get an awesome treatment from me, but you are going to get this incredible experience and transformation overall. Mm -hmm. So I had to get very, very serious um, about how to keep my clients because mm -hmm. I, again, I was living in my car and then eventually I moved into the basement of one of my clients and it was like, I, this is awful. I can't live with one of my clients. Like, yeah. and, and it was, it was really, really a bad situation. Yeah. I learned how to go from less than 15% to over 90% client retention. Oh wow! I, I got to the point when I got in my car accident, like, honestly, I don't, I was, Royal and I were talking about it when we were creating the course and I was like, I don't remember the last time that I had a client not come back to me. Mm. Um, and, and at that point, I mean, all of my, pretty much all of my clients were referral based. I got some people off of Instagram still, but everything was referral based. Like my business was this well oiled machine that was just yeah. running itself. I wasn't having to put money into marketing. I wasn't having to, you know, stress about things. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly how much money I was bringing in. Cause I knew exactly how many hours I was working. I knew exactly how many clients I had. Like it was, yeah so wonderful yeah. so Everything in this course team. yeah so in this course keep your clients i talk about my exact method mm. for going from that less than 15 percent retention to over 90 percent and um you know obviously everything i talk about it's, it's the framework right okay. i'm gonna talk about what worked for me but then i tell them very clearly in the course like you need to take all these concepts and make them work for you because if I have a bigger, louder personality and the way I said something wouldn't be natural for you, then tweak it. So it's natural for you. But yeah, yeah. these are the steps you need to be taking um, mm -hmm. to can, get can you. Can you a tip from, from your course? Let's see. Um, so first impressions. This is, uh, I don't know if you, we have a freebie download that you can okay. you can access on our, on our site. But um, first impressions. You know, a lot of times we think a first impression is like, how you look and how you speak mm. when you first meet a person. But when we're talking about your business, mm -hmm. they are looking at your social presence, like your internet presence, your online presence. Mm -hmm. um, so they're 
first impression of you is your social media. It's your yeah. website. It's, Before they it's even easy. walk in those doors. Exactly. Yeah, 70% is nonverbal. And, 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 when that, and when when that was said, it wasn't just body language. It was everything else. Yeah, your branding, everything like that. Um, Ease of booking. Honestly, one of the biggest tips that I can give you for very first out of the gate, trying to retain your clients, how easy is it for them to book an appointment with you? Mm, if okay. you have to, if the client has to send you a text message and then wait for you to respond and then you're going back and what forth. Year is, this? Is, is, I, is this 1998 I, or something? Or I, I, I don't know. I, this is 2020. Okay. Yes. Right? And literally, David, we, we see estheticians all the time that oh, have in goodness. their bio text only. Oh what? God. Why would you do yeah. that? Because first of all, the client doesn't want to go back and forth with you. There yeah. are a hundred other estheticians within a 20 mile radius that they could go to instead. Yeah. Um, but they, you also want to be able to capture their card information yeah. because what if they no show, they're not going to give you their card info over a text message. Yeah. But if you're using something like square or Vergara or whatever, then you can capture that info to protect you in the event that there's a no show. Mm. Um, but then also you, uh, it's easy for them. They can just book exactly what time, they don't have to yeah, do anything. And it's back things and right into your calendar. It's exactly. And you can blog. Like one of the tools I use is Calendly. You know, that's uh -huh. how we kind of scheduled, right? It's brainless, mm -hmm. right? You just set yeah. it up. You you set the days you want. You you can even tie in a credit card system if you want, so you can pre-charge a certain fee, like kind of like we were talking about, right? So if there's mm -hmm. a no-show, hey, you know what? Maybe your fee was I don't know, ten, twenty dollars, whatever that amount is. At least you have a few dollars, and they're 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 more inclined to want to show up, you know, for that, for that particular exactly. appointment. Right. Exactly. So there's, yeah. there's so many tools, you know, just like that um, to be able to do that. And there's no excuse. There are so many tools. If you don't like Calendly, use Acuity. If you don't like Acuity, use, you, you know, Square. like there's so many of them out there, yes. but it, it's these things that sometimes people, um, there's not enough emphasis on the systems mm -hmm. and the procedures. Um, a lot of estheticians are like, as long as I'm good at services and my business card and branding are cute, then that's going to do the job for me. But yeah. no, they're looking at the, they're looking at how you operate. Are you a professional? Mm -hmm. Are you treating yourself like a legitimate business with policies in place that they have to sign before or accept before they can complete the booking? Um, do you have the online booking? Do you have an online store where they can just have their skincare drop shipped to them? There's mm -hmm. so much that clients are looking at. And even if they don't, um, know that you should be having those things clients these days are really savvy and they can tell yeah. like they yeah. can tell if something seems janky yeah and, and also it's like you what you think that client has never been to another esthetician location before maybe what if if that esthetician has all this stuff in place and you don't you know you're 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 not looking that great right mm -mm. compared to them so mm -mm. if you want to win them over you have to at least get up to the the proper standard of 2020 right exactly yeah exactly. i love that um so i hope this is not too personal but like how did how did you two know each other is it more of like from a business perspective and then and then ultimately how do you guys manage to work together because i cannot convince my wife to work with me okay like she's like i have my day job and i'm happy clocking in clocking out at five and i'm done yeah <laughs> um so uh, i met melissa when i was on patrol Oh, okay. <laughs> you got in trouble, though. <laughs> I was like, let me talk to your supervisor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we met, and um, she ducked and dodged me. She gave me her phone number, but she ducked and dodged me for, like, three months. Mm -hmm. Like, I text, and she texts me back, like, two weeks later, like, answering. I'm like, hey, two weeks later, good. How are you? Yeah. Like, what the f <laughs> yeah. So you don't know how many times I you don't know how many times I deleted her number and then her number popped up popped up with a response like a few days later. Uh -huh. it was a wow. <laughs> so it was just a good chase. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, I think it was really, really good because he got to see um my personality is very like type A driven. Um if I'm if it is not on my radar to be texting you right now because yeah. I'm focusing on a project, yeah. then I'm not gonna text you. So he got like a very early on. Um, <laughs> early he, sample. He, yeah, he saw what kind of person I am very, very early on. And, um, you know, working together, it's really good. I think yeah. that sometimes we have. Th three days ago, I yelled, I, I yelled, I don't like working with you. Like three days ago. <laughs> 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 because, yeah. because, um, I, again, I'm like very driven type A. And yeah. he literally will sometimes have to come into the office and be like, Melissa, it's 11 p.m. You got to turn it off. 
Uh, we need to go. Okay. Hey, you, you know? guys have balance. You know, there's different because imagine if you had two type A personalities and one. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right. We'd be so successful. I think that we would. No, we would not. No, we would not. Oh, you, do well. you, <laughs> you know, we had the like yell at each other a few days ago, and then the next day we had this conversation, and we're like, you know what? We have so much to learn from each other. Yeah. And yeah. it's the balance. And honestly, like as great as my spa did when it was just me running my business on my own, mm -hmm. I realize now that it would have been a million times better if I had had him working with me because he has so many strengths that I don't have. And yeah. he has the ability to focus in on things that I'm like, I can't do this. I'm going to have to get out of the attack. I can't do this right now. You know? And he's like, <laughs> Hey, it's fine. I got it for you. You know? Yeah. And, um, so but what we've had to do is really understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. Mm, okay. There are some things I'm very good at and he's not great at. So mm -hmm. that's, those things shouldn't be his responsibility and vice versa. Yeah. So and, what kind of tasks do you, do you split up? Do you, do you, is there certain things like maybe sales, marketing, operations? Do you, do you separate in a more traditional sense or is there certain things you split up? <laughs> so we what? Just oh, nice. <laughs> oh, we this out. Yeah, the other day. <laughs> So I do everything email. Mm -hmm. Love it. I, I do all email response, answering, um, uh, email automation, everything like that. I hate all of that. Yeah. I do all the podcast editing. Um, well, no, we actually have an assistant. So the assistant helps with the emails actually. Um, but, um, I, it, well, she does the research, but I do a little research. I do a little research too. in like our, like, he helps with research. We both do research, but he helps yeah. with that. We both do Instagram content creation, but like we split that up. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I help with course content, um, Instagram engagement. That's like, I, I hate that. So if you it, messages in, in messages, you're responding to her or you're talking to her. Yeah. Comments or who's liking your photos and everything. Me. Mm -hmm. Or responding uh, to everything. I like, like that. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. um, let's see. So she, I do content, course writing. She, she we have a TikTok. She does TikTok. I'm not involved. I can't do it. That's all her. It's legit, y'all. Yeah. Graphic, <laughs> yeah. Graphic creation, her. So I may come up with the content, but she'll create the graphic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he'll write it out, like what the subject is, and then I'll make it yeah. into the design. Blogs, her. Yeah. Website, build. Well, we actually have somebody doing our website, but to, to edit websites, mm -hmm. all her, because I'm not techie. Yeah, website. yeah. Okay. update, yeah, all her. Yeah, so we have it pretty, it it, it varies, but. But it works, it for, works us. for us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and um, as far as coaching goes, we we coach together. Okay. Always coach together. We nice. plan our coaching lessons together. Um, we always, so that's a, that's a team effort. Nice, nice, love mm -hmm. that. Is there anything that both of you do not do? Or you both do together? I mean, so coaching, of course, right? But anything yeah. you don't do together or don't like doing in general. That I don't like doing it. Let me reread the list. <laughs> <laughs> so like for example, for me, accounting. I hate accounting, okay? I fell asleep oh. in, in courses, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in my accounting college courses. Uh, reconciliation? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. It just drives me yeah. nuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I do all the finance. Um, but I enjoy that. I like the budgeting. I numbers. like, I like uh, yes. all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but, and then I would say I, I, I hate everything email. Mm. So I can't handle that. So if it's, if you send like an individual, like straight to spa strong, like, Hey, Royal Melissa, I have a question. I'm more than happy to answer that personally. Yeah. Um, but as far as like our weekly emails and yeah, email promotions better. and marketing, yeah. so it stresses me out a lot. <laughs> what don't we do? I mean, we have, um, like our assistant handles any of our, like right now we're working on contacting schools. So okay. aesthetic schools. So she is the one who does all of that research, Everything. compiling yeah, all reach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then, I don't know, I feel like we do everything. Yeah, we do. Other than that. You, mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned an assistant. At what point in the business did you bring on the assistant? Was it in the very beginning, or is it like a year? You, you in? don't. No, you it you don't deserve late. an assistant in the beginning. You better bust your ass. <laughs> you gotta suck it up. <laughs> yeah. Hell no, bro. <laughs> you better work your. You better earn that assistant. You no, know, yeah. I. I'm a. 
I'm a little bit of a control freak. Very. And so uh, Royal. You know. <laughs> <laughs> get it, get it. So, uh, Royal has been begging me to relinquish control so we could hire an assistant for yeah, months. Let, let it go, all right? I just think yeah. the, the, the process is I just let it go. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, how long ago did we hire her? Two oh, months ago? Yep, two months. Yeah. Two First months assistant, ago. two months ago. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been helpful. Oh my goodness. Game I want, changing, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Two days ago, I was like, you know what? We need to hire a personal, personal assistant. Personal. Cooking, oh, oh. For everything. <laughs> I need to hire everything. Everything. Um, but, but yeah, it's been awesome. Do you have an assistant? I mean, are you are you a one-man show at this point? Or No, actually, How's... I have a team. I have a team of 10. Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> see, like, like, so I'll tell you a little bit uh, how we run the show, too. And also, there's... There's my, you know, my main business, but you know, I have a wonderful editor uh, that you know does all the video editing, and um, I have um, uh, our designer. She also doubles as helping me with the social media, the interactions on on Instagram, you know, bringing on guests on the show. So, it, you know, we have pretty much you know set messages that we would send and respond back and forth. But if there's something unique, I would hop on and respond uh, personally. Uh, mm -hmm. Emails, you know, same thing. Uh, so yeah, as, as I'm growing, but also like if I were to start this show, uh, before I had, you know, my, my other businesses, I would have done all this by myself, you know? So, so let everyone know, like you don't have to start hiring people right away. I would not recommend that do everything yourself, then write down what you do. Okay. Like these are processes and procedures. And then in person that you hire, they will thank you for saying, what, you actually have instructions for me to do? Instead of, because I've seen so many people and um, and I, I've done it too myself when I first started you know, my businesses, um, that they're like, David, what do I do? Uh, don't worry about it, we'll just wing it. You know, we'll just wing it. And, and next thing you know, it, that winging it turns into three months and six months. And, and, and you're frustrated and they're frustrated. They're like, I don't know exactly what you want, how you want to deliver it. You know, it's not that anyone's like, like um, a dumb or, or they don't know what to do. It's that they just need direction. And this is, this is not their business, it's your business. So you have to take, you know, uh, better, provide better direction. So, mm -hmm. no, sorry, I went on a rant there, but. No, you know, you're fine. That's, that's kind of like my mindset, you know, from, from business processes. Yeah, yeah we have. We have one of our clients who is working on hiring a couple of assistants and um, we sat down with her. She's like, okay, I want to hire, you know, this type of person and this type of person. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, what is their job description? Yeah. Well, I don't know. They're going to do this type of thing and this type of thing. I'm like, nope. Okay. You've got to oh, be boy. very clear because <laughs> again, this is your business. So yeah. you want to make sure that they're representing you in the business well, but also yeah. you have an, you have an idea in your head of what you want them to do. So yeah. unless you outline that for them, you're setting them up for failure. Yeah. You want to make sure you're being very clear. Have you seen this? Have you seen clients that want to have a clone of themselves? Like, I want to hire a clone, <sighs> right? I'm like, have you seen that? I don't know. Um, that's me. <laughs> 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 like, I'm sorry. It's not possible. You're special, right? You're, you are a... A, a entrepreneur and there's no one else like you for your business that you're trying to run here. So don't expect to clone yourself and have them run the whole business. If that was the case, then why don't they, they would just start a business of their own, right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's something you have to look for is like, okay, you want to hire somebody. I, first of all, I loved what you said earlier that, um, and this might've been before we started recording. Um, you said something about how you, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that I absolutely yep. agree with, like you want to hire people who are better at that task than you are. Like you need to have an understanding of the task so that you yeah. can be aware if you're getting ripped off. Right. Um, yep. but yep. you, you want to hire somebody who's better at it than you are. So like yep. when we hire, we're, we're looking at hiring a, a video and podcast editor right now. Mm. Um, you want to make sure that we hire somebody who is significantly better at it than us so yeah. that it elevates our business, yeah. right? Because if you're like, I need to hire somebody just like me. Okay. Well then you're only bringing your business to this level and it's the rest of your team. That's going to help be able to bring it up because yeah. you don't know everything. Yeah. You just don't. 
And so you've got to be willing to trust people who, you know, they're, they're like, I don't want to run my own business. I'm happy working for somebody else, but I'm an expert at editing or I'm an expert at accounting or, um, I'm an expert at, uh, sales or whatever it might be. Then bring those people on that are better at it than you are for sure. And I've even seen like other estheticians that are looking to grow their business and, and get out of the, the treatment room right? And focus more on the business. So what do they have to do? They have to hire estheticians to be really good at that. And then they're able to kind of scale out, start their second location, start focusing on their online presence, right? Uh, online mm-hmm. store too. So that your, your responsibilities have to change and evolve to you got to let it go, right? You got to let yeah. it go. It was a, so I look at it as like, like you, you know, you write down all your, your pieces, right? All the things that you do, and some of the pieces that you're not good at or and you hate doing, just delegate it, right? Yep. Hire someone to do it, um, you know, find, yeah. give it to your, to your partner. <laughs> <laughs> do the emails for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that in order to be, um, in order to be mm-hmm. successful, like with your unique voice, like we were saying, there's only one you, right? Yeah. And so you have something to bring to the table that nobody else can. And if you are bogged down with all of the other responsibilities that you're not great at, then mm-hmm. that doesn't free up your time to be able to focus in on what your unique gifts are. Yeah. So when you can relinquish control and delegate, mm-hmm. then that allows you to focus on what makes you and your business so important and the transformation that you're able to provide for your clients as opposed to you know worrying about the, the cleaning and the, um, you know, the inventory and all of these other things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now with your, your business, I know there's some crazy things going on right now with COVID and the protests and, and who knows, right. Are we going to have an alien invasion at this point? And then I, I, right. I was like looking at this like calendar of like all the months and then, you know, a second wave pandemic. And then finally in December, we have a comment. Okay, coming come in. Like, what's next, right? 2020 for you. Um, yeah. So what's, what are your plans uh, for the rest of 2020 and the future for your business? Um, I would say, I mean, you go, I'll go. okay. So the rest of 2020, we are just, we're just wanting to come out with courses because okay. right now, you know, obviously we do our one-on-one coaching, but, um, not every esthetician can make that investment at this point, especially with not being able to work for so long and everything. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, okay, how can we serve our community mm-hmm. um, outside of our one-on-one coaching packages? So the focus yeah. is courses. Right now we have the Keep Your Clients course coming out. We okay. have four other ones planned for the rest of, the, the, rest year. of the year. Mm-hmm. So we have you, that you have going. for them uh, by any chance? Um, well, they're, well, they're, well, they're priceless. They're pri- <laughs> <laughs> There's no price yet. Okay. Um, no, so, because they're so good. This, so, <laughs> this, this first course we're looking at 47. Okay. okay. Um, it might not be that, but we're looking at that. We're okay, wanting yeah, to make that price like, point, okay. yeah, like affordable. Again, we understand yeah. this has been as the economy within our industry has been mm-hmm. really, really difficult this year. Yeah. Um, so we're looking around the $50 ish range okay. and then, yeah. um, just, Continuing, I mean, of course, we'll still be doing our coaching and everything like that. We have yeah. our podcast as well, um, but we're just wanting to reach. Right now, the focus is reach. Yeah. Reaching more estheticians, reaching more people that we can serve and help. And um, yeah, so that's that's what 2020 will be for us. Mm-hmm. Do you have a different opinion of that? Well, I like that. I, for early 2021, I want, like, not early, but late 2020, looking in 2021. I want to start looking at schools to buy. Oh, well, this is the first I've heard of this. Oh, wow. It. Breaking news. I know. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's hear this. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's one of my goals. Like, I think that'll be a dope <laughs> legacy submit is if we have our own spa strong aesthetic school. You know what? I really, uh, I love it. I yeah. really like that. Um, but no, not, no, oh. but, no, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> you had that pause, I, right? Like, what is this? Oh. Well, I, I like it because, I mean, I taught aesthetics, I taught master aesthetics, and I, I love the teaching aspect. Um, yeah. But, you know, the thing with aesthetic schools is that their purpose is not to prepare you for your entire career in aesthetics. The purpose is to get you to 
pass your state boards. Yeah, you know, to- yeah. I've heard that multiple times too. They're actually, uh, the one of the challenges with the schools, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't teach you about business. Oh, no. <laughs> they teach you more on the service, how to, you know, apply, you know, your skills of aesthetics, obviously, right? It's super important. Mm-hmm. But then what about the business side? So, so they leave aesthetic school like, okay, well, I know how to do this. Well, I guess the, the only thing I could really do is join, you know, an aesthetic company, right? Another, mm-hmm. another, you know, business and work under them to get actual real world business experience. But I don't really learn that in the school and more of a traditional right. sense. Correct. Yeah. The, the purpose of the school is to meet their state's qualifications. Mm-hmm. The state will tell them exactly how many hours they need to be spending on sanitation, how many hours they need to be spending on disease control, on facial massage, and so on and so forth. And then they're just covering that. There may be time every once in a while for like, okay, we're going to do a special career event on a Saturday. It's not required to come in, but we'd like you to. Also, you're not going to get hours for it or you might, you know, whatever. So um, there isn't a lot of wiggle room, Mm -hmm. but I like the idea of doing a spa strong aesthetic school because then we could write it into the program and say, okay, look, the state's requirements are, you know, 600 hours, but this is an 800 hour program. Mm. because we're going to teach you about your policies. We're going to teach you about, um, you know, running the business. We're going to teach you about client retention. We're going to teach you about these other things as well that you don't get at a traditional aesthetic school. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Submit my name in history. I like it. All right. So (laughs) keep your eyes, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, Awesome. So, yeah, I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, well, you know, thank you for, for spending your, your time here with us. And uh, thank you for sharing all this valuable information and your story and your journey, you know, throughout all this. So how can our audience reach you? And especially, you know, looking at your, op, you know, your courses and, and whatnot, too. Yeah. So you can find us on Instagram at spa underscore strong. And then you can also visit our website, spa-strong.com. And um, we have a podcast. It's called the Spa Strong Podcast. And it's available on like every platform. Um, But those are, yeah, that's how you can find us. Or on TikTok, spa underscore strong. Oh, okay. Well, well, if you missed all that, no worries. It'll be in the show notes. It'll be in the resource area on our page. So again, thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, beautypreneurs. I'm David. My team and I created a website kit for fellow entrepreneurs looking to grow their business online, whether it's e-commerce or a service-based business. We've got you covered. This will also help us continue our webcasts and provide valuable knowledge to countless beauty entrepreneurs watching. For more details, check out our website kits at beautybiz.info forward slash website kits. If you like the videos that we make, you can support us by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Thanks. We'll see you next time.